Midway through 21-22, here's why it's clear the Chicago Bulls have endless machinery in their vicious attack. Zach Levine's having the most efficient season from deep range in his eight-year career, DeMar DeRozan's looking like the best player since MJ to rock a Bulls jersey, all while the 38th overall pick from 2021's draft in Ayo Dosumu has flashed elite upside defensively, and on the other end of the court, shown off solid awareness as a spot-up shooter and playmaker. Combine that with the NBA's sixth-best rebounder up front in Nikola Vucevic, along with two prolific shot-creating guards in Lonzo Ball and Kobe White, and it's no shocker that Chicago's developed a game-and-a-half lead in the Eastern Conference and an ongoing eight-game winning streak. We're going to look at how Chicago edged one out against the feisty young Franz Wagner-led Magic, and stick around to see every factor that could lead this beastly herd of bulls to the promised land in 2022. Before continuing, only 10.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll give you a follow back. Links in the description for those two platforms. After Wilds, literally right down to the wire endings to their past two outings, the Bulls took a jet back to Chi-Town, expecting a much less chaotic finish, facing up against the dead last Orlando Magic. For Bulls fans who were emotionally drained after back-to-back -back Debo buzzer-beating daggers, sadly, the game didn't turn out to be a walk in the park. Chicago's offense was uncharacteristically struggling to find any semblance of an offensive flow, which let the visitors hang around throughout the entirety of the game. Having said that, as this multi-talented group of strong-minded bulls have done all year, they made timely plays when they needed to on both ends of the floor, ultimately allowing them to hold off the feisty magic 102-98 for their 8th straight W. And just like how the bulls played against Indiana and Washington, the Orlando game was another outing where the bulls performed far from their best, but they still found a way to pull out the W with their hard-nosed defense and clutch shot making. The leading vote-getter among Eastern Conference guards, nearly doubling the second-place James Harden in votes, DeMar DeRozan, continued his MVP-caliber season on Monday night against Orlando, pouring in another easy 29-piece. He wasn't extremely efficient, which I'll get to, but it was still a performance that further proves the consistency and dominant top-of-the-league shot manufacturing that DeMar has in his offensive repertoire. Sure, he was up against the team with the 25th best defensive rating, but after catching the world's attention, and I mean the entire world's attention after those back-to-back -back buzzer beaters, becoming the first player in NBA history to drop game winners at the buzzer in consecutive days, still finding a way to carry your team with nearly 30 points in the very next game, that's impressive. DeMar may not have been facing the toughest defensive game plan, but you can bet Orlando's coach Jamal Mosley made it his team's top point of emphasis to send multiple bodies to guard DeRozan. And that's exactly the reason why Chicago's suddenly become such a scary, formidable squad in 21-22 after being at the bottom of the Eastern Conference for the last four years prior. Because while DeMar rightfully gets every bit of attention from the fans, media, and opposing coaches, that leaves a player who's posted at least 19 points per game in four different NBA seasons a man who's currently 7th among all players in points per game, Zach Levine, who's hooping at the highest level any of us have ever witnessed, to be taken less seriously by defensive game plans. Putting up 27 per night for the second consecutive year, what stood out to me most about Levine's game is how polished his fundamentals from three-point range have become. In his first campaign with the Bulls back in 2017-18, he made just 34% of his shots from outside the arc. However, annually picking his spots more and more effectively from that point on, Zach's become a 42% three-point shooter, which is good enough for 18th best in the entire association. Levine added 27 in the hard-fought win against Orlando, as the most dangerous second option in basketball made four of his nine threes in the process. Levine had a decent night efficiency-wise, shooting just 42% from the field. DeRozan went 11 of 24 shooting the ball, but had a rare off night from the charity stripe, missing six attempts. That bothered DeMar so much that he stayed after the game to practice them like the goat he is. Moving on to, debatably, the most beastly third option in basketball, Nikola Vucevic, who chipped in with a typical 13 points and 17 rebounds for the Bulls. It was already the seventh time this season that Big Vooch posted at least 15 boards. That's the eighth most 15-plus rebound games among all players, directly ahead of Cleveland's Jared Allen. Vucevic is also number 14 in the NBA in defensive win shares, 
considering his defense and rebounding were elements to his game that Nikola took flack for early in his career back in Orlando, you have to give credit to Vooch for working on the weaknesses in his game and covering up those holes. Outside of the big three, as of late, I've been most impressed by the extra bit of key contributions that Chicago's been getting from Kobe White. Lonzo did return last night, which we'll talk about next, but in the absence of Zoe and Caruso, Mr. White's been key on both ends of the floor with his scrappy defense and playmaking chops. That continued against the team from North Florida as Kobe came off the bench to score 17 points. Meanwhile, the Trey Young stopper Ayo Dosumu only had one triple, which were his only points of the game, but don't overlook the man's impact on defense and his overall hustle. Along with another lengthy 3 and D wing in the former Wizards draft pick Troy Brown Jr., he was a plus 8 against the Magic, which was tied for the second best on the team behind Michael Jor- I mean DeMar DeRozan. Troy Brown Jr. didn't score, but had 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and a huge block to end the first half. The big baller returned to the lineup after his protocols absence, and while he struggled to score, there was still an impact with 7 assists and some crucial rebounds. Chicago shot 43% from the field and 35.5% from three, with just 17 team assists. In crunch time, Chicago once again relied on their star players to work solo to find good shots on their own. Getting the start with Javante Green out, Derrick Jones Jr. had seven points and five rebounds. He also knocked down one attempt from deep. On the other side, Franz Wagner led Orlando with 22 points. Have to make a separate video on the rookie sensation at some point, but the former Chicago Bull Wendell Carter Jr. finished with 21 and 10. Unfortunately for Magic fans, they only have three wins since November 17th. Defensively, Chicago did a great job of knocking the ball loose, as they had 10 steals with Ball having three of them by himself. The Bulls began this game ice cold from the field, scoring just 10 points in the first 10 minutes and finishing the quarter with just 15. The reason for the offense sputtering was simply due to the Bulls being unable to knock down open shots. It could have been a lot worse at the end of the quarter, but Chicago's defense did clamp down to halt the Magic to just 21 points themselves. Chi-Town started the second quarter much stronger though, going on a 10-1 run to take their first lead of the game. With Levine struggling to start the game, DeMar led the offense and scored 7 points in the quarter. However, Orlando didn't waver and kept the lead to a reasonable distance throughout the half. But Gary Harris and Hassani Gravit knocked down two threes in the final minute to keep it at only a five-point Bulls lead. It was 45-40 to 40 going into the locker room. Levine and DeRozan combined for 17 points in the third, but Chicago struggled to find consistency in this quarter as well, scoring just 24 points as a team. After Vucevic knocked down a jumper to make it a 62-55 game, Terrence Ross went on his own mini scoring run. He scored 9 of Orlando's final 11 points in the quarter and made it just a 3 point game heading into the 4th. To start the final period, the Bulls added to their lead going up by as many as 9, but the Magic kept cutting down that lead. Wendell Carter Jr. once again played well against his old team, while Franz Wagner showed everyone why he was taken so highly in this year's draft. Even though the Bulls got a top perimeter stopper back in Lonzo Ball, they were still missing key guys on that end in Alex Caruso and Javante Green. Their absences were once again on display as not only did Orlando find driving lanes, but also Chicago's rotations weren't crisp enough, allowing open shooters in the corners. The Magic took advantage and were able to stay within striking distance. Again though, Chicago's big three rose to the occasion. Vucevic, Levine, and DeRozan scored on consecutive possessions to keep it a five-point game. Then after getting the ball at the top of the three-point line, Levine splashed a step-back jumper to make it an eight-point lead with just over two minutes left. Kobe White hit a turnaround jump shot to keep the lead at eight with under a minute to go, and it looked like Chicago was home safe. However, there were still some bumps in the road, some silly turnovers to cut the gap in half within seconds. Fouling three-point shooters didn't help, and Bulls fans were sweating by the end of it. It was a more testy finish than anyone would have predicted, but DeRozan and Levine knocked free throws home to seal the victory. DeMar said post-game, We can't be satisfied with anything. We work extremely hard and can't take anything for granted. Yeah, we've won some games and we're on a winning streak, but we're not satisfied with none of that. Meanwhile, Bulls head coach Billy Donovan returned Monday after missing five games in health and safety protocols. He entered protocols on December 24th. His flight was delayed and he had to miss an extra game. But Billy said he only dealt with mild symptoms, saying, quote, It really was not that bad for me at all. Based off their lackadaisical play recently, even though they've been pulling out wins, the Bulls needed Coach Billy back because their last loss was way back on December 11th 
which was to the Miami Heat, 118-92. Overall, despite some subpar shooting performances, Chicago keeps getting victories, which is what's important. Also, being able to get wins even when you aren't playing well, that's a sign all good teams have. The Bulls currently have a one and a half game lead in the East and a three day break before welcoming the Wizards to Madison Street on Friday night. The extended break should help this team regain their freshness and avoid having to pull out another tough, grueling game. But which player are you looking to see have a big night in that game against Kyle Kuzma and the Wizards and why? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. The top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st are going to receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says the most underrated part about the Grizzlies is their defense. The team is first in both steals and blocks per game, and they're also 15th in defensive rating and 17th in opponent field goal percentage. All of this without DeLon Brooks, arguably their best defender so far this season. Pause to read the rest of that amazing take from the Speaks Goat Ona. Hope you all have a great day. Deflo signing off.